so our business is so large and so dynamic that it's very easy to lose sight of things that need to be tracked. These loose ends sometimes represent thousands and thousands of dollars worth of inaction. Holtcat is a heavy equipment dealership for Caterpillar Equipment based in San Antonio, Texas. We sell, rent, and repair heavy equipment and a handful of other business products. We have a very large set of assets that sum up to somewhere near a billion dollars worth of assets. Holt Cats territory is 118 counties in Texas, and my job is to make sure that we have the right inventory for our market, the right amount of inventory at our store locations, and also to manage our heavy rental fleet. Because we're the largest Caterpillar dealership in the United States, managing and tracking all this inventory is a huge challenge. We've got to know where this inventory is at all given time. If that equipment sets around, we lose time. In rental, time is money, and when these machines are setting around, they're not able to generate revenue for the organization, yet the cost is still there, so the, the clock is ticking. You need a tool that actually provides visibility and clarity and transparency and communication. Email doesn't do that, phone calls don't do that, texts don't do that. We were fighting a match with one hand tied behind our back. Okay, so as the video stated, we are Holt Cat, one of the largest Caterpillar dealers in the world, and uh, we have a tremendously large territory. As stated in the video, we're 113,000 square miles, which is about the size of the state of Arizona. We've got new machines, we've got used machines, one of the largest rental fleets in the world, and not to mention on top of that, about 10,000 work tools that attach to each of these machines. So as you can imagine, we have a, a very difficult task of, of keeping track of all of this equipment. Uh, effective execution of our processes is paramount to keeping order in our universe. Um, coordination, communication, uh, constant in, in and out of machines. Machines are coming onto the yards, they're leaving yard, our yards. It, it's, a, it's a complex job to keep track of everything. And not unlike most companies in the world, we have multiple various projects going on at any given time. And so keeping everyone on the same page, keeping everyone equally informed and really accountable to the deliverables of those projects is something we've historically struggled to accomplish. All right, let's make sure everybody can see this. So this is just a quick run through of the company. Uh, as you can see, we're running uh, about a billion dollars worth of assets, uh, 3,000 employees. We service over 10,000 clients. Annually, we're running around $2 billion worth of revenue through our organization. And again, hitting on the size of our territory, the scale of our business is extremely large. So over the last several years, the economy has been very robust. Uh, the growth of our company has, coupled with the strong economy, has created pains within our organization. Uh, I like to say that we have a very imbalanced um, people to asset ratio. And so the, the growth of our organization has created pains both internally as well as externally for our customers. We've needed solutions to address the growth. This is our world. Not unlike many companies, there's various departments within the organization. These, these departments are often siloed. The communication that needs to exist just traditionally has not been optimized for us. And we've again, experienced tremendous pains in trying to pull everyone together, get everyone on the same page. This slide is put together really to depict the interdependencies of all of these different work groups. Uh, work groups are layered on top of one another, stacked on top of one another. The success of one department links to the success of another department. So we had challenges related to uh, continuity of process and the ability for us to execute on those processes was being hampered by the fact that we were utilizing email as a primary means of communication. Uh, did a quick study and found that 25% of inboxes are full of junk. And we're, we realized that we're a $2 billion company. We can't afford to have critical business processes parked next to junk mail inside of our inboxes. So obviously we needed a better solution. I want to talk to you about quickly the intersection of Hulk Cat and Monday and how we came to become business partners. 
Doug and I, we spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to optimize our business. I would say that we're both productivity junkies. We're always trying to figure out ways to, to work smarter. And so I like to say that Monday.com probably found us versus we found them. I was on YouTube watching a video and a YouTube video popped up uh, that had uh, a focus on Monday.com. And typically, as, as a lot of us do, I think we, we click through those fast and we don't want to sit there. We want to watch the video we dialed up versus an ad. But the ad caught my attention. I listened to it. I called Doug and told him about it. And, and Doug's famous words that I'll never forget said, we need to give this a try. And so we signed up a two-day trial. And within 14, I'm sorry, a 14-day trial. And within a week or so, we, we, we knew that we had to go deeper into this. So, uh, so I signed us up for a 10-user license for one year, knowing that, that that would cover my team, my direct reports. But so quickly we realized that the power of Monday.com Monday is really in the scale of the application. It's not to be used in the confines of a small work group, but the power is to leverage it out throughout the company. So we quickly went from 10 users to 25 to 50, and then I had to call time out and have a conversation with our IT department and tell them what we had. And this did grow very organically. It grew from the bottom up. And so convincingly, we made the sales pitch that we needed to invest in an enterprise account. And I say make an investment because we see Monday.com as a true investment in our business. And then so the 200 user licenses were consumed within 90 days. And we were back at the well asking for another 200, which thankfully we were granted. So as of October 29th, we're a 400 user license company with Monday.com. So that's, that takes us to how Monday.com and Holtcat came to be business partners. And I'm going to turn it over to Doug and let him take us through uh, some of the use cases that we have with Monday.com. Thank you. I think I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, Jason, for walking us through uh, how we got to Monday. Uh, I'm going to take a few minutes and try to help you understand what we're doing with Monday. Um, it's, it's funny, when I was watching the opening slides for Iran's uh, clips, uh, that kind of stole our thunder a little bit, because uh, a lot of our slides uh, basically validate what, uh, what you talked about. Uh, so. so, as Jason pointed out, we needed a, a multi-purpose tool for our business. What we had, the, the standard box items weren't working for us. We were uh, suffering and struggling to try to communicate. And so whether it was managing our inventory or uh, how we turn around our rental machines or how long it took to do things or sharing files, um, it wasn't working. And so with Monday, uh, we found what we kind of nicknamed it a Swiss Army knife. And it's really a Swiss Army knife on steroids is really what it is uh, and so much more. So I'm going to walk you through uh, one use case that we use, uh, and this is actual real sort of data here. Um, uh, no big corporate secrets here or anything. But what this board here is going to show you, the first of three uh, examples, is that we had a process where we would first uh, have people when a machine comes back, uh, our fleet inspectors, the guys who would actually, like at a car rental place, determine how dirty a machine is and what it's going to take to actually get it ready for the next customer. So they would log the information uh, into a standard login sheet. Uh, Later, at the uh, beginning of the month, they would need to send me a report in Excel so that I could take that report from eight different locations along with the wash log reporting that we're doing with, uh, these are switched around. Uh, and so I have 16 Excel reports that I would have to consolidate into one report so that I could then run pivot tables so we could then, 30 days after the fact, figure out what in the heck we've been doing and how productive we were. Well, and if it's the case that, you know, everybody followed the process maps correctly, which they'd have to look at to do their work, then we might get some good ideas to what's really going on. But that's 30 days too late. So this was the first board that I built in Monday, and it was to solve this pain point. So what we were able to do with this board is we were able to take all the stuff that we had on the previous slides and put that in basically 
separate groups based on what the work need was. We don't have separate boards for both washing and returns. And our fleet inspectors now, not only do they actually put information into the board, and it's now usable because now they're directing workflow to other people through the board. In the past, we were just documenting what we were doing. Now we're actually directing workflow for other people and we're simultaneously capturing that data. And I don't have to run in at the end of the month and work on a two hour Excel project. And then, which by the way, part of those emails that we cut down that Jason mentioned were the eight emails that I was sent, then the one that I was sending Jason and my other colleagues to help them figure out what was going on. And then they'd have to open up the email and then open up and look at the Excel report and send me a response back via email and all that junk. So now it's clean, it's simple, it's efficient, and it's optimized. And actually, uh, uh, although I've got this label New York Fleet Inspector Log, we've actually gone from this board to once we started working with the process, now we've gone to a second board revision, which has even made it more optimized for us. And so that flexibility and that dynamic aspect of what the Monday tool can do for us is really making a huge impact for us just in this process alone. And this process is critical to the success of our organization. So thanks again for doing this for us. Um, so the next one I want to walk you through is another business case, and that is uh, customer service. Now, I'm sure all of y'all at some point in some place outside of Monday have had a poor customer service experience. Because so far we have not had a poor customer service experience at Monday. And this is not a commercial to promote them as much as to validate that we had a huge problem here. And our problem was that our customers would call us, you know, the ones that bought the million dollar machine and said, hey, this thing's broken down. We need it fixed. So they'd call us up, they'd call Lonnie and say, Lonnie, yeah, our, our machine's down. Can you help us out? So Lonnie would then say, sure, uh, I'll call you back. And he'll pick up the phone and he would call our service manager and say, hey, Dave, got a customer who's got a machine that's down. You know, can you fix it? Uh, I'll give you his phone number and all that stuff. So Lonnie thinks he's handed it off to the right person and they've got it and they're going to take care of the customer. But three days later, the customer calls back and says, hey, uh, what's going on with my machine? Nobody's come out here yet. Uh, when are they coming? Lonnie's kind of bewildered. He's, well, I don't know. Let me call you right back. And he's back on the phone again, calling the service department. Hey, what's the story? What's going on? And so the customers bounced around through this terrible maze of, I, yeah, I forgot, or I called somebody, they didn't call you back. And we didn't know that Lonnie had called. And we couldn't, quote unquote, prove if we had to that Lonnie did call. And so the customers just bounced around. And sometimes it's only like a couple of days, but sometimes it could be a couple of weeks. So Jason and I went down to one of our stores and met with the service department and the sales department at that store. And within about a half an hour or so, I would say, we built this board. And what we did is we took that same initial phone call request and said, okay, customer so-and-so called Travis and they've got this machine and here's the picture of the issue that they're having or whatever the case it may be. Here's how important it is. Here's their name, their phone number, where they're located. And uh, due to the really coolness of automations, um, we're able to actually take that same information, I think my board's moved a little bit here, uh, and actually direct it to which service department needs to work on it. And then we know that we've actually submitted a request. Now we need to know who's picked up the ball. Well, now we know that Lily's picked up the ball. And we've actually even got a timer that tells us how long it took for her to actually say, I, I got it, right? And then we've got another timer that says, well, I've called the customer. So 20 seconds after I said I got it, I've got it. And I called the customer. So now we're in good shape. So now when the customer calls back two or three days later and says, hey, you know, where are we at with this repair? We can say, well, I think service told you it was about six days or so. So we're on like day three. So if you can give us a little bit of time, maybe we can help you with something else in the meantime. But for now, yeah, they're six days away. And so now we're about three days left. So now we've got visibility. Now we can communicate and it's transforming how we do our work. Um, there is, I could sit up here for hours and talk about how much these two boards have done for our business, but I wanna uh, kind of conclude with 
uh, my last example, which is uh, quality surveys. So as was mentioned before about you know, the importance of surveys and getting feedback. So our model, uh, I think I'm missing a slide, but basically, uh, unfortunately, you're seeing this, and this is our new way of doing surveys. Before, our survey was this. It was, <laughs> it was nothing. That's not because we didn't want to hear customer feedback, it's just because we didn't really have a good tool for it. Yeah, you can use SurveyMonkey and some other tools out there that make it nice to do surveys, but what do you do once you get the survey? Right? It shows up in where? Somebody's email box, right? Or you have to go out to a website to go find the information. And then who's going to take it from there? Who all's involved in the survey piece? Right? Who's going to call those customers that aren't happy? So, this and another survey were built within like minutes. And uh, using a form, if you're not familiar with this, which apparently not everybody's familiar with the fact that you can have forms. So you just take basically what's in those previous boards and you get to select which items you actually want in that form. And then we're actually using this and we're texting this as a link out to our customers. And now we can get immediate feedback. It goes into a board like on the previous ones where you don't lose the visibility on the surveys or the results, and now you can assign who needs to go address those and how quickly they're addressed. So those are our three slides that I wanted to share with y'all, uh, which uh, in our minds, as we were sitting there listening to Iran, validates basically all the things that we were looking for in a tool. And outside of all those other things, yes, we have eliminated 25% of our emails, which were just junk, or things that just never really communicated well. Um, in our minds, if you want to build an extraordinary thing, then you need an extraordinary tool. Thank you. <laughs>